Hello grade 10 mabuhay. So for today's video, ang pag-uusapan natin ay tungkol sa permutations and combinations. Okay, so dinivide ko yung topic na to into two video para mas maintindihan yung maigi kung ano nga ba ang permutation at kung paano nga ba sinosolve ito at the same with combination at kung paano natin to sinosolve. Hello there again. So, ang una nating pag-uusapan na topic ay ang permutations. Okay, bago tayo mag-start sa permutation, let me tell you kung ano ba ang session objective ng ating lesson. Okay. So, the first one, after the two sessions, you'll be able to apply fundamental counting principle, you'll be able to compute permutations, you'll be able to compute combinations, and you'll be able to distinguish permutations versus combinations. Okay. Bago tayo mag-start kay permutation, let me tell you first or discuss to you the fundamental counting principle. Okay. First, let us first um, identify fundamental counting principle. So, fundamental counting principle can be used to determine the number of possible outcomes when there are two or more characteristics. Okay. Fundamental counting principle states that if an event has n possible outcomes and another independent event has n possible outcomes, then there are m times n possible outcomes for the two events together. So para mas maintindihan nyo kung ano nga fundamental counting principle, let us have an example. Okay. Let's say for example, a student is to roll a die and flip a coin. How many possible outcomes will there be? Okay. Ibig sabihin daw, ang bata ay magro-roll ng die, kasabay ng pag-roll niya ng die, ay mag-flip siya ng coin. Ilan daw ang possible outcomes na maaaring lumabas? Okay. So, pwede natin siyang gawin through listing method. Pwede natin ilagay na uh, since meron tayong anim na possible outcome for die, kasi ang die ay merong numbers from 1 to 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, pwede, and then ang head naman ay meron tayong dalawang possible outcomes, which is a head, ay a coin, a head or a tail. Okay, that means it could be a 1, tapos head, 2, tapos head, 3 head, and so on hanggang makarating kay 6 and then tail. So counting all the listed possible outcomes will have 12 outcomes or simply sabi nga ng fundamental counting principle kung meron tayong m ways doon sa unang event tapos another n ways doon sa pangalawang event kapag pinagcombine natin yun uh, it's just simply m times n so we'll have simply 6 6 possible outcomes for a die times 2 possible outcomes for a coin and 6 times 2 is equal to 12 outcomes. So, we don't need to write yung mga possible outcomes para bilangin pa. Another example, for a college interview, Robert has to choose what to wear from the following slacks. For the, from, from the following, 4 slacks, 3 shirts, 2 shoes, and five ties. How many possible outfits does he have to choose from? Okay, sabi sa fundamental counting principle, imu-multiply lang natin yung iba't ibang possible, ay iba't ibang ways ng iba't ibang events. Okay, so that we have four ways for slacks, three ways for shirts, two shoes, two ways for shoes, and five ways for ties. So that's simply four times three times two times five, which is equal to one hundred twenty outfits. Okay. So I guess you are now ready to understand or learn permutation. Let us first define permutation. So a permutation is an arrangement of items in a particular order. Sinabi natin particular order. That means notice order matters. Kapag pinag-uusapan natin si permutation, order matters. And 
to find the number of permutations of n items, we can use the fundamental counting principle or factorial notation. Kaya diniscuss ko kanina ang fundamental counting principle kasi pwede natin siyang gamitin sa pagkuha ng permutation ng n items or yung ating factorial notation. Okay. So in order for you to easily understand, let's have a simple example first. So the number of ways to arrange the letters A, B, C. Okay, so meron tayong tatlong letters. So let's say we have three blank. Kasi ito yung possible na position ng tatlong letter na A, B, C. Okay, number of choices for first blank. Ilan ang pwede, ang pwede nating ilagay sa first blank? Ilan ang choices natin? Since we have three letters, tatlo yung ating number of choices. Okay. Number of choices for second blank. Since select na natin yung isa, nilagay na natin sa una, so out of three, ilan na lang yung pwede natin iselect na letter? So you only have two. Okay. And the number of choices for third blank. Okay. Since select na natin yung dalawang letter, ilan na lang ang pwede natin ilagay dun sa dulo, sa pangatlo. So you only have one. So following the fundamental counting principle, that's simply 3 times 2 times 1 which is equal to 6 or simply the factorial notation which is 3 factorial. Pag sinabi natin 3 factorial, that means it is equivalent to 3 and all and all the numbers less than 3. Sunod-sunod na factor niya. Okay, let's say for example, 3 factorial, that's simply 3 times 2 times 1 which is equal to 6. Another example, to find the number of permutations of n items chosen r at a time, you can use the formula. So in this case, um, hindi natin sineselect lahat ng item. In this case, f r at a time, that means kung nagseselect lang tayo ng particular na item dun sa given na item. So always remember that n is the number of objects to choose from and r is the number of objects chosen. Okay. So, ang gagamitin natin formula ay NPR notation which is equal to N factorial divided by N minus R factorial where R should be greater than or equal to 0 and it should be less than or equal to N. Okay. Let's say, for example, we are to evaluate 5P3. So, 5, the number of objects to choose from. So, 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 3 factorial. And that's simply 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial. Okay, kung mapapansin nyo dito, I stop at 3. Kasi, hindi ko na-evaluate yung kasunod niya na 2 times 1. Dahil yun yung nasa denominator niya para makancel natin. So, kung tatandaan ninyo, if we have 5 factorial here at we have 2 factorial in the denominator, so we simply have 5 times 4 times 3. Hihinto na tayo dun. So, 5 times 4 times 3 is equal to 60. Kasi nga, kinancel na natin si 2 factorial. Okay. So, let's have an exercise. A combination lock will open when the right choice of three numbers from 1 to 30 inclusive is selected. How many different lock combinations are possible assuming no number is repeated? Okay. So kung gusto nyo sagutan ito, pwede nyo i-pause yung video for a while and then answer it and then you resume the video kapag tapos nyo na siyang sagutan to determine whether your answer is correct. So gagawin natin dito, a combination lock will open. So ang number na pagpipilian natin ay 1 to 30. Okay, how many different lock combinations are possible assuming no number is repeated? As since yung combination lock natin ay may tatlong numbers, that means tatlong numbers ang pipiliin natin from numbers 1 to 30. So that's simply 30 factorial divided by 30 minus 3 which is equal to 30 factorial divided by 27 factorial. So we're going to start to stop with 28 kasi nga 27 yung nasa denominator kakancel na natin yun. So, that's simply 30 times 29 times 28 which is equal to 24,360. Another problem. From a club of 24 members, a president, a vice president, a secretary, a treasurer, and a historian are to be elected. In how many ways can the offices be filled? 
Kentucky. Since we have 24 members, 24 yung pagpipilian natin. Okay, out of that 24, magseselect tayo ng isang president, isang vice president, isang secretary, isang treasurer, at isang historian. That means out of 24, we are going to select 5. So, N is 24. R is equal to 5. So that's simply 24 factorial divided by 24 minus 5 factorial, which is equal to 19 factorial. Since this is 19 factorial, we are going to start to stop with 20 with 20. So that's simply 24. 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 times 20, which is equal to 5,100,480.